Good morning, folks. We're starting today with one of the largest departing filaments we've seen in months. This plasma prominence has been lifting up through the corona, maybe poised to erupt today, hundreds of thousands of kilometers long. Looking at the Earth-facing disk, we see no major Earth-directed CMEs, and that's a bit confounding given the uptick in flaring and the abundance in filament activity. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we see the flares actually heading back down now after more than a dozen M-class events the last few days. So let's take a look at sunspots, the large southern group, and the incoming spots on the north. The southern group is our flare maker, and we have beta gamma delta magnetism with delta spots at each of these polarity interaction zones. And by contrast, we don't see that type of interaction on the north. Magnetism is split left to right. We'll have eyes open for more spots coming in at the umbral field loop seen down there as well. Coming to the solar wind, in general it is continuing to decrease intensity. Earth's magnetic field is unperturbed and it is calm. You're going to see a darkening of the northern coronal hole and a transequatorial coronal hole coming in on the left side. Remember the current opening is weak. Top quakes of the day hit Barbados, where anything over magnitude 4 is worth noting. They hit 5. But I want to jump back to yesterday and back across the Caribbean to the even rarer Honduras rumble. It's likely no coincidence that their earthquake comes at the end of seven days of torrential downpours. Homes, schools, businesses, and farms are all feeling the effects while preparing for these floods to continue for days. Now the first thing that might come to mind is the extra crustal weight of all that water happening to put pressure in the right place. But also remember, floods and runoff themselves impart static, carry surface tension, bend local magnetic fields while creating some of their own. All of those things are confirmed EM or ES pre-earthquake signals. It's the exact thing I mentioned at the end of the last fly on the wall as potentially delivering quakes to Southern California this winter. Check it out at suspiciousobservers.org. Top article of the day discusses how Earth-like planets in close orbit to small stars are very likely to have magnetic fields. It's like giving steroids to their chances to host life. It's linked below. Along with the Goddard SVS site, an incredible look at years of comets, the Kreutz Group, unaffiliated comets, returning orbitals. Full videos can be found there along with a guide to knowing which colors mean what. They also have a pretty amazing look and analysis of Saharan dust moving to South America and some of the many stages of that cycle. The top weather story today stands alone above the rest. The U.S. East Coast is currently under a hurricane watch. We'll have to monitor how this one moves throughout its life. While we do that, we've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.